Yo, yo, yo. Thank you all for tuning in today to the very first live episode with a guest of the Captive Raptors podcast. So, unlike my very first one, we're not going to go through the comments as much unless you guys have a question for myself or our guest today. But I do appreciate the support, first. Second. Fees, saying keen. What's good, Mike? Appreciate you stopping in. We've got... Um, see how this shit turns out. Gary's going to get a Nile today. Or not Gary, because that might be the whole point. You'll have to stay tuned. So, But I do have to give a shout out to, let me get my banners up, to the Bug Factory in the UK. I will put a link in the description after this podcast goes live. They're sort of an unofficial official sponsor now of the podcast. So shout out to the Bug Factory if you guys want to grow your mealworms and um, they great eco pods from recycled fridges. Check the Bug Factory out. If you're in the UK, they've got the cheapest bugs online that I found. So check them out. Um, but yeah, for the most part, we're going to find out today, do Niles make good pets? And I was, so long story short, a Nile housing a 4 by 2 by 2 Well, we're about to find out. Because I was just scrolling through Instagram one day, and I came across this massive enclosure. And I was like, Jesus Christ, what's this? Had a look, clicked on the profile. And I was like, okay. And just quickly, because again, I'm going to ignore the chat in a moment. So everyone go crazy. Hey, Bam, thank you very much. Any questions, put them in in a natural transition, I'll ask. But again, you guys can talk amongst yourself. But Fee did this, Fee did this, Fee did this, and Fee did this before um, we went live. But anyway, we are going to go live. Today, very special guest is Moss Exotics. There we go. Hello. Hey, guys. <laughs> How are you How's doing? You right? Yeah. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. Uh, a little bit, the UK at the moment is having a bit of funny weather. It's hot, then cold. So I've currently got the window open, but now it's getting cold. So I might have to shut the window, but I digress. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so obviously just off the bat, do you agree? Four by two by two for a Nile with a red bulb for the rest of its life? <laughs> <laughs> Not for the rest of its life or with a red bulb. The uh, people behind you can just, just see the, the magnitude of that enclosure. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, for like a six inch Nile, like a fresh baby, I think like a 36, 18, 36, or a 422. But you're going to need to go bigger once it gets bigger. Yeah, for sure, man. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll definitely get into that because it, it's mad. And just quickly, I have to <laughs> shout out Dan because he's, um, he's actually a lifesaver and he's, he's supported me in many ways. I've got these ones from a show, Dan. Um, I'll have to message you, the artist, because I forget. And then these are from the States, from Adeline Robinson Art and... And then they were just for my birthday. But yeah, so what we are going to get into now, you have to bear with me because I'm a technophobe and I have all this weird stuff in front of me and I'm still new to the software. So I'm just going to talk because then it looks like I know what I'm doing as I'm talking. <laughs> so we're going to go into just some quick fire questions just to ease us into this. So it's, for example, like yes or no, one or the other. You'll, I nicked it from um, Repti Chat who nicked it from someone else. So we're all stealing ideas out here. Um. But I just picked a few. So starting off, really simple. Snakes or lizards? Simple. <laughs> the <hardest laughs> <question anymore. laughs> For those uh, of you who don't know, um, Mr. Moss Exotics, who will introduce, introduce himself properly in a moment, um, he keeps venomous snakes as well. So he's, a, he's got quite the collection. So snakes or lizards for him is probably a hard question. It, it is a hard question. They... I like to interact with uh, my monitor a lot more than my snakes. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, that's all I can say. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> lizards, lizards are better to interact with. You prefer yeah. snakes overall? 100%. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lizards, they're, they're a lot more fun to interact with. Yeah. Okay. Next yeah. one <laughs> money, money or time. So that's another good one. I tried my best to like figure out some good work because I didn't just want like um, I don't know, Weetabix or Cheerio. I mean, that's probably a good one in itself. But so money or time? Fuck. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's well, money would be great because then I can like upgrade everybody's enclosures. I mean, yeah, it'd be less time, but my animals could be buy happier. More time. Money comes, money goes. Time, time just runs out. Time does run out. 
Yeah, it's probably more time. Time. Mentally strong or physically strong? Mentally strong. Good choice. Wild yeah. court good, wild court bad. That's kind of controversial. Yeah. <laughs> um, good explanation. Good, go, I, good or bad? <laughs> yeah, man. It's like I, I want to. My, my, my answer is going to be longer than a good or bad. That's but... fine. You do. If, if you need to elaborate, you can elaborate. Okay. Um, I'm going to be on the gray line with that one just because okay. there are some animals uh, that are in cap- captivity, like uh, like bearded dragons. Like People wouldn't have bearded dragons in the U.S. if it wasn't for the importing. Now they're everywhere, and now people yeah, don't have to take them from the wild. Um, I do tell people try to go captive bred if you can. But, you know, some animals are rare, and then those animals should be bred if they're wild caught. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, that's the same with me. If it's wild caught, if it, every, even dogs originated from the wild at some point, so you can't just outright yep. say wild caught's bad. So pro snake rack or no snake rack? Uh, I think snake racks are fine for, you know, for breeders. And, you know, mm-hmm. like the babies are in there for maybe a month. Uh, but for your adults, I think enclosures, no racks. Yeah, all of, from what I've seen, pretty much all of your stuff seems to be in an enclosure with some form of lighting and enrichment and bits and bobs. So, oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Arid species or tropical species? Tropical. <laughs> this one is from my girlfriend. Pigs or goats? Goats. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> Big big reptiles or small reptiles? I like big. There yeah. are some really cool uh, small ones. I had an old lizard. I still liked it, but I like my big reptiles for sure. Too. Being a Nile, Nile keeper. Fee's, Fee's in chat right now, which is my girlfriend, saying controversial for picking goats, even though she <laughs> picked goats, I think. Um, okay. Big monitors or dwarf monitors? Big monitors. Instagram famous or YouTube famous? YouTube famous would be awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Haven't got to tell me. Um, Talking about the shoes, Crocs or no Crocs? Yeah, no Crocs. I'm sorry. Oh, this is the end of the podcast. (laughs) I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Feisty or tame? A little bit of both. Somewhere in the middle. A little yeah. bit of attitude, but also doesn't really want to kill you that badly. Right. And then the final one, wild types or morphs? Wild types. There you go. I agree. So that was just that. So now we've had a little icebreaker. If you'd like to introduce yourself properly, who you are, you can list all the species or go for a little overview of what you keep, how long you've been keeping, all that sort of stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm Josh. Uh, I'm Moss Exotics on Instagram, and I keep a Nile monitor. I have a Snout of Cobra, Supon Monocle Cobra, a uh, Fisher's Cat Snake, Mangrove Snake, Northern Pine Snake, Western Green Mamba, Boiga Divergence, Squam, Brown Forest Cobra, Boiga Sienna, and Bearded Dragon. <laughs> there you go. The OG original. What did, you, yeah. what did you start out keeping with? What was your first ever... How long have you been keeping, and what was your first ever reptile? Uh... My first reptile was actually my northern pine snake, and I've been keeping for nearly three years. Okay, so no, wow, not even that long, and you've got some a lot of animals that want to kill you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I got mentored, and uh, when I came into the venomous hobby, uh, I thought I was going to be like going for like copperheads, pygmy rattlesnakes, and stuff. But he had mostly lapids, mm-hmm. and I worked with my first cobra, and I instantly fell in love with the lapids. Like that's that's my thing. Uh, lapids are amazing to me so i have to ask do you have kids uh one month old son okay congratulations yeah has that changed your mind because this is the first question has that changed mm. your mind um about venomous or have you still like locked room locked area locked everything's safe nothing obviously nothing bad can happen or do you think or oh, it's a little bit risky or anything like that yeah so when my fiance was pregnant i definitely would think about that if I should sell everything and everything but at the same time 
I love these animals and I can't really part way, but I definitely think about it. Um, but I do, I live in a small house. So mm-hmm. I actually, this whole entire building, I built inside of my shop for my reptiles oh, okay. just to keep them. Cause yeah. I didn't want to get rid of them. Cause I didn't have another room. I only have a two bedroom, two bath and my son needed a bedroom and mm-hmm. selling my animals. I didn't really want to, but it has crossed my mind. So I built this. No, that's the, the, that's sort of similar with me because we we were in a tiny tiny flat before I moved to this place, and I had a lot of lizards. And when I say a tiny flat, I mean it was like a one bed studio. And I'm a yeah. single dad, so my son would come and stay with me on the weekends. And I could have sold all of my animals to give him, my son, obviously a lot more room. Mm-hmm. I still have all my animals, so I, <laughs> I, I understand. I was like, you sleep on the floor, boy. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but yeah, I know I know what you mean because like. Obviously, people listening to this, 16 people in chat, thank you very much. Um, people listening to this, obviously, I'm hoping, I assume, they, I assume that they love reptiles like we do. You know, I highly doubt I'm nowhere near big enough for random people to be watching this and be like, oh, they like snakes. So I, I, I 100%, <laughs> 100% get it. So fair play yeah. to you for taking it sort of out, making, making both work. You know, a lot of people wouldn't, because I'm going to get into it in a minute, but obviously, the fact that you're giving your Nile so much when you could just be doing like an eight by four by four or something like that. So we'll, we'll get into that in a moment, but so keeping, you've been keeping for three years, start off with a pine snake. And then obviously I'm assuming you started then mentor being mentored by someone or was that before you started keeping? Oh uh, no, that was after about like maybe a year later after keeping, then I reached out to him and then he said, yeah, I can mentor you. So Okay. So venomous then, is still kind of new. How I obviously don't know how it works. Um, Fee saying that my mic is scratching. Do I sound okay, or am I not too bad? You sound lovely. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> she doesn't think so. Hence, oh. but um, so uh, that's my train of thought. Something about venomous snakes. Oh yeah, licensing where you are. Are you just allowed to keep them? Do you have to have a certain amount of hours? Do you need a permit? Like, how does it work? Yeah, so in Oregon, uh, some species are non-permitted, some are. Um, the only venomous that I have that don't need a permit is my snouted cobra and my bush viper. So all of A3s, uh, you don't need a permit, but need a, you need a permit even for a mangrove snake here. Oh, really? <laughs> but you can have yeah. other, like, true, well, and a lapid and a, and a viper, but then you have to have a permit for a boiga. I can't make sense of it. Yeah, I had no idea. I was talking to Fish and Wildlife, and I'm like, hey, someone told me that you need a permit for these. Like, oh, yeah, you do. I'm like, oh. So he gave me three. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. He said they in Oregon, you need permit. You don't need a permit for your pine snakes, bull snakes, gopher snakes, corn snakes, and garter snakes, and that's it. Everything else needs a permit. And he's like, that's weird. That's so strange. Do you have to have... Um, so like Gila Derma, the well, Gila monsters and the beaded lizards, do you need permits for them or no? I don't know. I never looked that's, into those. That's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Same but, for denial. I'm assuming you can just have denial. There's no permit there. Yeah. For denial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll okay. show you the uh, email from Rick that he uh, sent me because he has it all explained. It's interesting. It's so it's so strange because obviously here in the UK we spoke about it briefly on Instagram messages, but here in the UK, to my knowledge, because again I've never really looked into it, mm-hmm. all venomous species, um, f- fixed or hinge fangs, so vipers or lapids, true venomous snakes that aren't rear fanged. To my knowledge, the only rear fang that is DWA here, and again I could be completely wrong, is boomsang. Otherwise, I don't even know mm-hmm. if we can get them here, but um, boiga used to be, but they were taken off. But then there's some certain species of like scorpion and bits and bobs, which are nowhere near as venomous as, for example, say a boiga, but they are on there. So it's all it's all a bit weird here. But then all crocodilians are here. But then you can go and buy a crocodile monitor <laughs> completely fine. So I just don't really understand. But the problem is as well, with legalities, as soon as you start putting a certain amount of animals on a list, where do you draw the line? So would you go, oh, all snakes over eight foot or, you know, so it, it becomes yeah. so gray and not everyone will be happy so that's the sort of subject people can't win um and i think it's going to get to the point where a lot of stuff will be licensed just the way that the world's going but we won't doom and gloom this podcast with that so <laughs> right 
But you know, you can, feel free, if you want to touch on it, you can touch on it for sure, man. Like I'm, I'm happy to talk on it if you want to, because you sounded like you want to. That's all right. <laughs> okay, no way. <laughs> so then you got your. What was your? What was your first leap into the venomous? What was your first venomous? Like uh, the venomous. So well, when I, the the first one you actually owned that was yours that you brought home oh, for like the squam, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, my my buddy that mentored me, he uh, got me a deal with the squam and pick it up. And I don't really handle them too much. They're super bitey, and they don't yeah. really do anything. They just sit in one spot or branch. They're really cool. They're really pretty. Um, yeah, I don't really do anything with them, but. I do, I do like venomous. Venomous snakes. I, I don't think I'd ever own one. One, it costs an arm and a leg over here, and two, I just, I just don't trust my <laughs> luck. <laughs> yeah. But they do, they do have outside of being venomous, just the look of a venomous snake, especially a lapids. They just, they almost look. It sounds like so silly, but like I'm quite into Pokemon. But it's like a final evolution Pokemon. They're like the best of the best. <laughs> they do just look so much cooler than obviously you get the odd snake that does look really cool but then yeah. for the most part most venomous you look at them and you go well, okay you're fucking badass you're like yeah so i can understand it and then obviously you've got a lot of boiga so boiga really what is it about boiga that does it for you uh the colors the um and the face in the in the head structure i really like the head structure with the head patterns yeah. uh and then their attitude. I really like their attitude. But I like I don't mess with them because mangroves they stress out easily. Yeah. Uh, that they're more of a fine china snake. You know, you just have, you just look. And every once in a while, you bring them out. But okay, they're, that's, uh, that's, yeah. that's cool. So, if you want to, if we want to touch on that, what is your opinion then when you see people basically pissing them off? Because obviously, you have in your head, I have in my head, um, like a dendrophilia the stereotypical mangrove snake just doing this typical gape strike and people are doing it let's be honest for views um if they i don't know a lot about them so does that like boil your piss and you're like for fuck's sake guys just leave it alone or do you just let bygones be bygones you know it does kind of piss me off but it's you can't change people so you just kind of move on yeah it's because i don't try to do anything like that with my snakes so they're all left alone for the majority like i don't even really handle my snakes that often yeah um, my mamba he's just sitting out in front of the glass right now watching me he's not freaking out so i mean like i just i, I want my animals to be more comfortable than you know cool with a gaping mouth and striking so no that, I, i'm the same i say to a lot of people as well like because my little mangrove monitor, like transitioning into the monitors, my little mangrove monitor, Mango, um, mm. she's just a bitch. Like, she doesn't, enjoy, <laughs> she doesn't enjoy being touched. She doesn't enjoy, um, she doesn't really enjoy people. Um, yeah. She had quite a bad life. Um, I, I can imagine her, the whole import bits and bobs. Anyway, people are like, oh, why don't you just work with her then? I'm like, well, I do. I get her out. She runs around. She's not scared of me. And then people are like, yeah, but why don't you like, you know, force handle her to break mm. her spit i'm like well no what's the whole what's the point so I, I appreciate the fact that you're on that side of the fence that it's much better to watch an animal exhibit natural behaviors in a an elaborate vivaria than it is to bloody just have it, it on your wrist and be like oh look how cute my mangrove is <laughs> but, yeah so I think we're on the same page there yeah yeah if ziggy doesn't want to come out ziggy doesn't have to come out so you're Z ziggy obviously your nile monitor yeah. It's two years old, am I right? If I saw that correctly? Yep, yep, he's now two. So you've had him shy of two years, I guess? Yeah, I, I got him when he was like six, seven inches long. And yeah. I don't I don't know, like from the egg to that length, I don't know if that's I don't know. I had him yeah. for two years, so he's two years old to me. Uh no then yeah, so he's I imagine again I don't know, but I imagine they're between two and four months old when they come in. Okay. Um I imagine, but my mangroves that just came in recently, I've got generally ones that are that big and then ones that are that big. So who knows? Yeah. Um, do you remember how much you paid for Ziggy or what the going rate for a Nile is in America <laughs> right now? $60. <laughs> $60. Yeah. 
a lot of money. You got to save yeah, up. You must have to save for... a long time to buy yourself a lizard like that. Yeah, man, it was a. It took my whole life savings. I can imagine. <laughs> Wait, I think it is when you look behind you. But oh. so, on that, you've spent sixty dollars on this, um, <laughs> this little six to nine inch Nile monitor. Um, be completely honest with me. Were you prepared? for what a Nile was or or where you like fell in the trap of because I did with the mangroves I was oh. like oh this is gonna be cool and then all of a sudden I realized how much of an arsehole my mangrove was and I was like I'm so underprepared but you work through it and you get there so were you like yep or were you like oh shit yes I, I stressed out so yeah. I, I did the bad thing and I uh I bought him without any research Mm-hmm. Uh, anything like that. I brought him home. He was in a, I put him in a fish tank with Aspen bedding and it lasted for like maybe two weeks. And then I got him into a bioactive 36, 1836. And then, uh, yeah, their size as I was still living at home with my parents and mm-hmm. we're still building my house. And, uh, I just, I was kind of stressed now, like, am I going to have a space for this or whatever? Um, but, you know, my guy that mentored me with Venomous, he has a croc monitor and he was actually helping me with all this uh, information. And uh, so I took that and then built this inside of my shop. And that enclosure is built into this building. Um, that enclosure, I mean, probably like $4,000 so far. And how big is, how big is, I, I did see the measurements, but I forgot. And how big is that enclosure? Uh, 10, 10, 7. 10, 10, 7. Fuck me. So, so. my next question then yeah. is uh, fair play for holding your hands up and saying you started out wrong and you've definitely turned a corner and like we'll get into it, but Ziggy's <laughs> probably one of the most social Niles and not just social because he's fat or like lethargic. <laughs> like he's, he's like my mangrove full of beans, but seems to have a good relationship with you. So, yeah. How come you brought it? Was it just, oh, this is cool? Or did you see someone who had a cool one on social? Or were you just a spare of the moment at an expo? Or what, what was the case? Uh, so when my buddy got the croc monitor, I was handling that. So the croc monitor was my first monitor that I worked with. And then I was like, okay, dude, I got to have a monitor. This is super cool. But I skipped out on a handful of monitors. And uh, I saw Ziggy. And then something just clicked. It's like, okay, that's the one. And I had no idea about Nile monitors. I didn't know about their temper. I didn't know how aggressive, defensive they were. Um, something just clicked when I saw him, and he was just my buddy. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I can relate to that, because that's exactly what happened with me with Mangrove. I was just scrolling through our equivalent of, I think, is it Craigslist that you have over there? Um, yeah. So our equipment is called pre-loved in the UK. I was just scrolling through pre-loved and it was just boom, mangrove monitor. And I had, had an Aki, um, and I had experience with a Savannah years ago, experience with reptiles, but not with yeah. monitors. And I've always loved monitors. And I was like, Oh my God, this would be amazing. Like, I think she was about 300 pounds. So not a lot. And I was like, Oh, I've never seen mangroves here. Yeah. Went to get her. And <laughs> from day one, <laughs> she was like straight from hell. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. And I, when I, I, I reached out to a few people. I won't name names, but I reached out to a few people. And I was like, hey, I'm going to pick up a mangrove on it. What size do I need? She's about two foot long, blah, 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 blah. People were like, oh, six by two by two be fine. So I brought a six by two by two, kitted it all out, done all this. Went to get my mangrove monitor, who was two, two and a bit foot total length. Um, same size she is now. She's barely grown. And I put her in the six by two by two. And I was like, fuck. So then the biggest I could have in my tiny little flat was a six by three by three. So I brought mm-hmm. a six by three by three, put her in that. Wow. And then I was like, oh, it's still so small. And now she's in an eight by three by three, but I'm upgrading her again in, I'm not, I haven't got a time frame, but she's going to be upgraded again. Um, but she's laying eggs and I assume she's happy. But the problem is when you get into monitors, you put them in an enclosure and you're like, oh, okay. Uh, it's too small and then they you put them in a bigger enclosure and you go oh, okay and you go oh, it's too small so do you i mean i'm not questioning your enclosure at all i think it's incredible but do you wish you could have gone bigger do you think it's going to be enough do you think there's never big enough i, I want it to be bigger um because yeah. if he's a male 
you know, the males get about seven and a half feet and that only leaves like two feet left on the sides. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's mostly tail, but it's, I would love ideally like a 10, like a 15 by 10 or 15 by 15, ideally. Yeah. 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 But, so 10, 10 by so 10, you're 10 long, 10 deep, seven tall, is it? Yeah. So 10 tall. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so even then, though, because the square footage of it, because obviously if it was just, for example, only two or three foot deep, then being 10 foot long, like you say, is irrelevant. But because you've got, because, I mean, you can see the massive basking edge and then the massive pond as well, um, and there's still the usable space. Plus, the walls are climbable, which just gives you so much more usable space. Yeah. Plus, you can add shelves on, for example, the back or the right-hand side. So you can double or triple mm -hmm. your space in the same footprint, which it looks like you're doing with obviously the basket spot. Yeah. Um, so when, when did you get the realization that you're like, was it your first two weeks when you upgraded it into the 36 or was it like a, when Ziggy was about a year old, you're like, fuck, I'm going to need a room for this lizard. Or was it sooner, not too? Sooner yeah, than was that. It? <laughs> yeah. As soon as you bought it, you were like, what have I done? Yeah. Like as soon as I got like all the information I got, which is like less than a month, then I was like yeah. going to bed, just like stressing about it. I'm just yeah. like crap. And it's, but you know, dedication kind of mm. pulls. I don't know. Dedication helps a lot. If you're just, I don't know. I don't know how to explain that part. But so, what made you? What made you keep him? So, do you know if it's a him for sure? Because you said if it's a male. So you're just saying it's a him. Or so be pretty sure. So little like last summer. So as you know, monitors shed a lot and I missed, there was a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of suck shed on the tip of his tail. It was turning into a little bit of scale rot. And I made an emergency vet call that day, Couldn't, took him to the vet the next day. And uh, I lost my train of thought. Took him to the vet, had suck shed. <laughs> I'm assuming they did a sex scan, maybe, or they did. That's right. That's now. right. We're, yeah. we're talking about the gender. Yeah, because that's how I found out. Well, the vet thinks he's a male, so that's why I'm leaning towards male because the, the okay. bul they say because of the bulges at the end, uh, the beginning of his tail. There's bulges. So. Yeah, yeah. So they but. basically most male. I don't know about sexing Niles, but obviously they're sexually dimorphic in size when adults. Um, yeah. But most monitors, for the most part, when you get to the Kawaka, just past the Kawaka, they so females will be like this, almost concave, and then males will like hang down because they have the bulge past the Kawaka. And yeah. if you look underneath as well, so when you have the Kawaka, if it sort of the tail sort of dips in and then comes back out, that's normally a female. But if it stays fat the whole way from the base, then that's normally a male. Um, it's normally a good indicator. And he looks quite big as well for two years old. So I imagine. He's a boy. Um, yeah, it's, I hope. It'd be awesome to have a seven foot lizard. <laughs> yeah, it would <laughs> be females, awesome. The females, they get around like five feet. So, yeah. I mean, like, so if it had a female, if you have a 10 10, I mean, five feet, I mean, that's like more than enough for a female now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think you'd be okay. It's like, it's a hard one, isn't it? Because I had this conversation with myself on a podcast the other day. Um, my problem is, so like my my mangrove total length is two and a half foot. She's currently in an eight by three by three. So more or less, it's three times longer than her, just a bit deeper, just a bit taller. Again, I want to upgrade her, but that's what she's in. Um, so let's say I upgrade her. Let's just say an eight by four by four because that's the next commercial size. So it's mm -hmm. almost double her length, double as tall. But then I'm like her activity level. So I'm like, oh, okay, let's let's say I put her in a eight by six. And then where do you draw the line? You know what I mean? So yeah. For me, as long as you're reaching all the natural, your animal can reach all its natural behaviors, um, mm -hmm. you can thermoregulate correctly and you can stim stimulate it properly within reason. Obviously, any enclosure size works because you just keep going and eventually they're just back in the wild. Because um, <laughs> you could do a 20 by 20 by 10, but then I'm sure it would use every square foot, you or you could do your size mm -hmm. and it would still make it work. So, you know, yeah. Great. Yeah, I agree. It's they'll use every inch as possible. I mean, you could give them a whole house and they'll use all of it. Yeah, so, so it's, yeah. it's hard. Where do you, well, you you can't? So I think we as keepers just have to do like our best. And obviously, 
you had that opportunity within the first month to go, do you know what, this isn't for me, and you could have sold Ziggy. And now, like, the relationship that you've built with this animal and now these enclosures that you're building, and, you know, like, they live, I don't know the exact, but I imagine they'll go 30 years. So you never know where you're going to be in five, 10 years' time. You might be in a position where you can give it an absolute, you know? So this is what I keep thinking to myself because I want everything to be walking, but I'm just not there yet. But who's to say that I won't be in five years, you know? Yeah, it's... I'm hoping in next like two years to build a bigger facility on my property, like a uh, mm -hmm. 25 by 30 or something. Cause that's, I want to do the same. Like my snout of Cobra six feet long is six to 18. Uh, and he acts kind of arboreal ish. He's always trying to climb. And I would love to get him in like a six, six, three, six, six, four eventually. Um, and I would just love to upgrade all my animals like that, but you know, money and time and, Money, yeah, no, of course, yeah, it's, it's, especially with the world the way the world is. I was speaking to someone, <clears throat> oh, where were they? I know the UK is bad, Australia is getting bad. Um, but they were saying the cost of plywood's gone up like threefold. Um, so like to build what you want to build, like you say, the four thousand dollars behind you, like who's spending four thousand dollars on an arm monitor enclosure? Like, comment Not right now, I, I don't know anyone, <laughs> so unless you're in like Florida, obviously, it still costs money, but you can just it's so easy to build Put something outside. outside so it's almost a cheat code so fair play to you because you have to factor into the fact you've, you've done it in a separate building as well so you're taking retail space up from another place <clears throat> and all that sort of stuff so back to then ziggy being a young baby what sort of steps and processes what was your philosophy on socializing were you like right i need to make sure this lizard's super tame or were you like i'm just going to leave you be actually for um for a while, I would leave him alone in his enclosure. And uh, I didn't start kind of messing inside of his enclosure until he was coming up to the glass. Because what I, what I did was I sat in front of his enclosure for hours of the day. Back when I lived in my parents' house, he was in my room. So I would just sit in front of him doing nothing. Or if I had like a cup of water in it, I was just yeah, drinking yeah. it. And if I move it around, I can see him like looking at it, getting kind of curious. Play with him like that. And then... Uh, Eventually, I'll open up the enclosure, and I'll put, uh, you know, in a fist, slowly put it in there. He'll puff up, immediately stop, and sometimes I'll play with the dirt. And I noticed when I play with the dirt, he also got curious, like the defensiveness went away, got curious, and I don't touch him still. He'll come up to me, I'll let him think, and then uh, eventually he started trusting me a bit more. And then I was able to put my hand underneath the basking bulb then he will come up and bask on my hand. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a really good way to bond with your animals instead of like throwing them in the tub of water and stressing them out. They're, yes. they're, yes. they're smart. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. They're really smart. And I don't think people realize how smart they are. It's um, they remember everything. So if you yeah. stress them out, they remember that. Uh, so hand yeah. underneath the basket bulb is a really, really good technique. I still use that for him. Um, mm -hmm. and he'll come up and he'll just like wrap his arms around my hand and rest his head on my hand. I mean, it's perfect. Um, just kind of do that. I mean, don't try to force hand them. Don't try to rip them out. Uh, play with the dirt for a while. Just sit in front of their tank and let them think. Yeah. That's a good tip because I do that. The, the playing with the dirt, I do that and like flick things around just at the door. So nowhere mm -hmm. near whatever species I'm working with. And yeah. if they want to come over, they'll come over. Like today, I was putting a just a makeshift temporary arboreal nest box in with my gill and I because mm -hmm. I, I'm just paranoid that they're not going to use the one on the ground. So I've just put a box up high. And I'm screwing this box up high on the complete opposite end of the enclosure. All three come out. I've got a video of it and they're all like, just like watching what I'm doing. And I'm yeah. sure if I stayed there long enough, they would, well, one of them did come over. As soon as I like took my hands away, one came instantly over. Cause like you say, they're like, well, there's something new in my enclosure. Different animals, cause obviously Gil and I are a lot less um, defensive as Niles. Yeah. But where do you think this whole philosophy of force handling you want? And when I say force handling, let me clarify, taking it out of its enclosure, against its will this is what i believe is force handling letting it run through your hands until it calms down and then whilst it's in my opinion in an exhausted state and terrified you go yep i've tamed my lizard where do you think that sort of philosophy 
has come from? Do you think it's social media? Do you think it's like old heads or do you just think it's like, I don't know, just passed down from keeper to keeper? I think a lot of it is just being passed down from keeper to keeper and social media because yeah. people will get the false readings of these animals calm because they're staying still, not tongue flicking. Maybe there might be like a little bit of mouth gaping for breathing. Um, and then they're like, hey, look, it's calm. It's not doing anything. It's like, it's, it's really not. <laughs> um, yeah yeah that's that's not the way to go about things if i saw a post on instagram again i'm not going to name names because i'm not interested in it but <laughs> i saw a post on instagram um and it was someone with a mangrove because obviously i i like monitors but mangroves are my thing um yeah. and there was this mangrove and it was on this person's arm mm -hmm. and it was just taking air, making itself big, not a, single yeah. tongue, not a single tongue flick, and its eyes were fixated on the camera. So this animal's clearly stressed, clearly yeah. stressed, petrified for its life. Like, but the thing is with monitors, so people forget they have a freeze mode, like all, all animals, but mm -hmm. people assume fight or flight. So if it's not biting you or whipping you, people just, or running away, people assume it's fine, but they have this freeze mode, and you can just see, like, in this animal's eyes, because it's its eyes are on the camera and obviously cameras look like eyes and looking an animal in the eyes is the worst thing you can do because it's a predatory trait. And I was just like, Oh my God. And then I was like, do I message this person? Cause I had spoken to them before. I was like, do I message them? And then again, I, I don't, I don't, I say, I don't want to like do hate. I want to hear if I can talk about it, but um, I just unfollowed because I was like, I can't support it. I just can't because if they put a caption and again, they might know that the animal's scared, but from what I could see, was wow look at me with my tame mangrove yeah and if they put a caption to be like this animal was incredibly stressed i had to get it out for this that or the other i can sort of understand it i don't really agree with filming it i do have posts on my page with mangroves being a bit wary and then i mm -hmm. try my best to explain what they're doing so people can understand the behaviors but again i don't touch mine unless i absolutely have to so if i'm doing maintenance on the enclosure like turning dirt obviously they have to come out unless they're up high in a cork tube but normally they're underground so i sort of have to disturb them but so I just see stuff like that, and I just think to myself, I feel so sorry for people, because a lot of people, for example, I'm going on a bit of a passionate rant now, so sorry. But <laughs> you're fine. I think people, I think the problem is with people, what they do is they're in an echo chamber. So for example, someone messages me and goes, right, Paul, what's the best way to care for a mangrove? I tell them. They look at me. I have followers on Instagram. They assume I know what I'm doing. They don't talk to anyone else. Let's say all that I've just told them is a load of shit. So they're now caring for their mangrove like shit because mm -hmm. they've learned from me which is not their fault they go to the next person and go oh by the way paul's monitor has told me to keep him at um 90 degrees basking and then the new the next person's like what the fuck that's way too low mm -hmm. and then they're like whoa 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 what paul's doing this and paul's doing that and it's not that person's fault but that person's the person being attacked you know and this yep. is what the reptile hobby is like it's like oh you don't know what you're fucking talking about because they haven't done their due diligence and i always say to people speak to as many people as you can take a bar graph if someone says 90 degrees basking someone says 90 degrees someone says 90 degrees someone says 110 someone says 110 someone says 130 and then plot it take an average and then adjust it to your animal that's what i say to people don't just listen to me because my my is trial and error through that method if someone says four by two by two for a baby four by two by two four by two by two someone says a three by two by two for the most part you've had four by two by two so that sort of thing and i do think social media is so dangerous for that and this is just more of a rant rather than a question so i'll turn it into a question um how how what question do i want to turn it into do you do you think what do you think could be done to be changed you know like do you do you think do you think about it sometimes because i think about it a lot like you might just stick to your own lane i i have one of these brains that just never switches off as you could just tell but do you do you think to yourself when you see this? Oh, I wish this person would just do this, or yeah, I wish this would happen. Yeah. Um, now the Nile enthusiast group on Facebook, a lot of people are not treating their animals right, or putting them in their pockets, or letting them eat toads. Yeah. Uh, All right. And I try to help with the Nile group, but then a lot of people have this mindset: it's my animal, I'll do what I want. And so eventually, I just left. I. I don't think there's much you can do. I think the best thing you can do is just focus on your animals, you know? Yeah. Because people, 
they're stubborn. <laughs> it's yeah, like you're, you're trying it. so hard to help, but they don't want help. And then this animal is just like, okay, it's going to die next year. I mean, not, not to be rude, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're not wrong. But it's hard, though, because if, for example, let's just say, just like, roles reversed. If I was keeping an hour and you messaged me and went, oh, by the way, mate, you're keeping an hour like, shit, it's going to die. But politely. <laughs> but we're just keeping it short for the story. My the the way I under way I anticipate it as a um, spectator is that person me. I'm now like, oh my god, I've been caring for my animal incorrectly. I'm a bad person. But then, rather than just putting my hands up and going, do you know what? Okay, thank you for reaching out. People they go defensive. They go, no, I haven't been caring for my animal wrong. Paul's monitors told me that mangrove monitors don't need dirt. <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> That's also an inside joke for people that know. But I just like, I try my best. Cause like I had a guy message me. I, I say this story all the time. He messaged me and he was like, Hey man, my mangrove's not eating any tips. I said, yeah, no worries. Send me your parameters. Send me your enclosure. Sends me a picture of a rack. And I was like, what? Ooh. And he was like, it's in the drawer. <laughs> and I was like, I'll be completely honest at home at my phone. I was like, what the fuck is this like? <laughs> and i messaged and i was like why is it in a rack and then he was like oh the pet shop told me to put it in a dark box and Gosh. i was like okay what you need to do is this 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 and this and then fair play to the kid he went out this guy in the states he went out and he brought everything i said and spent like six hundred dollars and brought everything i said and was like thank you so much like i thought this was wrong but this is what the pet shop told me and i didn't know any different because again he yeah. hadn't done any research but if yeah. I had went off on him and I was like, you fucking idiot, I can't believe you've done this, blah, 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 blah. He would have just been like, oh, my God, I'm never going to ask for help again. Yeah. Um, so me <laughs> being patient, I guess, <laughs> help. Because because I, what people have to remember is like, for example, you can't, I could look at you right now, not knowing you, first time we've properly, properly spoken. Look at what you're building for your now and be like, wow, this guy's amazing. But then two years ago, you had it on Aspen. You, you know what I'm saying? Like people don't <laughs> realise... But like, you've obviously held your hands up and gone. I need to do better. Like I, yeah. I started with a six by two by two for a fucking <laughs> on three foot mangrove. Like we all start. We all are beginners mm. at some point, and I yeah. think a lot of the reptile hobby forget that. And when, especially when you're a higher up keeper and you've been keeping, like I've been keeping now for thirteen years, twelve years. Like I forget where I was, um, and I think that is just a trait of people. It is. Yeah. I don't like talking about where I came from because <laughs> when it comes to Nile monitors, like that's like the most basic Nile monitor owners, like always don't know anything, Aspen, you know, it's like, ah, crap, I, I was wrong. But yeah, it's um, people, there are people that are just, they will jump the gun down someone's throat who's big, who's just coming in, doesn't know anything. Uh, that doesn't help. But like you said, you know, if you're just nice, if people were more nice, you know, I think the community would be a lot, lot better. <laughs> yeah, we've got a couple of, couple of comments just like now. Like I said, I was going to do the comments, but Facebook's are the worst. Like, <laughs> Facebook's the worst. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Facebook's hit and miss. Like, this is why I'm not, I don't use Facebook. Like, Facebook, there are some, there are some good things on Facebook. Um, but if you guys have got, like, any actual, like, question questions, then drop them in and I'll get back yeah. to them. But... No, carry on. Sorry. Um, I'm, my phone is a charge, so I don't know no, how well the quality is going to be right now. No, that's, you, you're completely fine, man. Um, but what... So we'll get you plugged in, and then I'll, um, I'll get into... We'll go back to the teaming process. We good? Okay. I hope yeah, so. You're fine. I can still hear you. You're a little bit more quiet, but you're completely fine um so you were how long how long was it before ziggy was getting to the point where she would actually he would actually be more than comfortable we talking a couple of months from huffing puffing playing with the dirt are we talking a year like because obviously every animal is going to be different and every animal is going to have it take its own time but for ziggy personally how roughly how many months before she was trusting it it took a while because he was really stressed out when I had to move him from my parents' house to my new house. And for about a week after, so that took about a year. 
already. So it was going good, but then I had to move him. He got, they were, uh, we took 10 steps forward, 20 steps back after that move, you know? Um, then he went off feuding and he got really defensive after about a week of moving into a new environment. And then after that, it was good. So it probably took about a year and like two months. Long but time. It, it did. And he's not, he's not like an Asian water monitor. Like you see him, like he's super nice to me. Like if this is to me, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm the only one that works with them. So if there's yeah. new people, he will get defensive or he'll hide. And not everybody can enjoy what I enjoy from Ziggy. And Ziggy recognizes me. He'll come out, you know, he'll crawl on me. He'll run everywhere. He's fine. Are you cool if I bring Which your Instagram really up important. as you're, as you're saying this so I can show everyone? Yeah, go for it. All right. So I can, I can no longer see you, but you, you carry on, um, you carry on talking and I'll just find some cool videos. But yes, yeah, so I I've had that with mango. Like mango doesn't really like fee my girlfriend, but she will, um, she'll happily like, so there's Ziggy and all of his glory, but he's in shape, man. Like he's not obese at all. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. <laughs> so just on that, just quickly, I'm going to flick through these, but like, what, what do you do for like a feeding schedule? What do you do for like, dietary like what are you feeding uh so i go off by flaps because i yeah, yeah a lot of people yeah a lot of people will overfeed these and then you have now monitors or your stomachs are always stretched out as big as basketballs and these animals now monitors are long and skinny they're only 18 19 pounds when they're adults in the wild um it's not big at all i go off so I feed them, that's like every four days I feed them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I feed them rodents. I feed them quail eggs, uh, hard boiled chicken eggs, tilapia, silver ciders, shrimp, uh, organic ground turkey. And then occasionally I still offer bugs. So they're, yeah, as, as you know, cause you have monitors that eat bugs too, but, uh, now martyrs, they are strictly insect eating when they're babies. So yeah. then, once, then once they're big enough for a pinky, I would feed a pinky once a week, but I'll still keep them on like dewy roaches, mealworms, stuff like that. Um, but now he's more two years old. He's more into more meaty, or meaty diet, but I still, I still give him uh, insects still. He's still grown. That's yeah, yeah, that's good, man. Like, I'm, I'm glad that you feed um feed insects because, like you say, a lot of people just go rats, 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 yeah. rats, 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 <laughs> rats, rats. And like Niles can handle that, like they can, as long yeah. as they're spread out, like you say, and every couple of days, every four or five days, um, and then mixing it up. So, what what sort of basking temps are you running with Ziggy? I run uh 125. Yeah, okay. For yeah, no, it's like, again hot as well. So. Some people again will just do rats and put them at ninety degrees, so they can't digest properly. So then they right. do just get fat, and then you know. So, yeah, he's he's definitely a credit to you. Like I've never kept an aisle, but he's definitely in good shape. And the fact that you've looked into like their weights in the wild, like clearly shows that you care about. Because I did a big thing the other day about captive monitors being obese because people don't make you just put food in there. So they they don't have to run even in a big enclosure like that. Ziggy's going to be smart enough to know this guy's going to come in and feed me. I'm not going to be running around. So you have to enrich them when it comes to food. You have to sparse the food out. You have to give them hot basking spots. Otherwise, they yep. do just they're smart enough to sit there and be like, "Feed me, human." So. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. like. What? I know. I just I. I just see everyone's talking about fifty dollar Niles in the comments. But um, do you make him make him? Obviously, we saw there just briefly. You get him to jump around, climb up your leg and stuff. Do you ever make him like run around a lot? Do you ever hide food? Do you ever mix things up like that? Well, when he comes out of his enclosure, and when I'm feeding him, he'll run around, um, or he'll just explore. He doesn't necessarily run. He's not like he doesn't run like yours, which is really cool. But Ziggy, <laughs> yeah, he, she, he's just. She's, Ziggy is just laid back. Uh, which, which is cool. He though. will run. What? It's cool that he's laid back because 
you get we'll get into it like yeah. we've been going for 50 minutes anyway like already like so if you're not rushed well, we'll get into it because you hear that niles are just meant to be like so i think our monitors are swap personalities because my mangrove acts like a nile and your nile <laughs> seems to act like these social mangroves i keep seeing on the internet so <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so quick quick question from Gary. Question for Josh before I before I hit buy now, best starting size enclosure for a Nile and would you recommend going smaller at first to help the socialization process? A, a smaller what? I'm sorry. Smaller enclosure to help the socialization process or would you just go for a big enclosure from the start and what size would you recommend for a baby? Yeah, if I could start over again, I would go with the 36, 1836 Exoterra. That's why I put him in, and it was great. He used every inch of that, and uh, the substrate level, like a four-inch substrate level, and he'll dig. Um, you do even see him, like, on top of the screen just hanging upside down. They'll, they'll use every inch. So um, don't worry about it. Just put a lot of climbing branches in there because they are uh, very arboreal-like when they're babies. Mm -hmm. um, they love to climb, so lots of hiding places. I, I didn't even run a, uh, a hide box. I didn't do a hide box. Uh, I tried that for about a week, and his attitude was great, and then crap. And then yeah. uh, I took it out, and I just put fake plants in there to kind of make it like where he can't hide behind those, and that worked really well. Uh, his attitude was a lot better after I took the hide box out. Um, so, yeah, I would do a 36-18-36 for it. Baby, not. What size did you go from after the 36, 18, 36? What size enclosure did you go into then? Like uh, before I got that enclosure? Uh, after that. So they've started growing. Um, oh. And then what, what, what are you upgrading to from the 36? So how long roughly was Ziggy in the 36, 1836? And then what was she in after that? He, he after that. About a year. And now he's uh, now he's in a six two two, which is what I had with my monocle cobra, and that's what I you know, empty cage. And <clears throat> when I built this enclosure, I was already in the process of building this. So the six two two is too small for him. He's three feet long. But I mean, you know, I'm I'm in the process of building him a mansion, so he can kind of deal with it from now. <laughs> yeah, no, of course. Yeah, no, I don't disagree. <laughs> But yeah, it, it takes uh, two years. I mean, you're probably going to need something like this. Yeah. So you got to keep that in mind. So then, why do you think Niles are brought as much People. as they are? Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Say that again. So Nile monitors are obviously a very common first monitor. Why do you oh. think that they are brought as much as they are? Cheap. Yeah. Anybody as well. in crackhead can go in and buy one, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. What do we, what do, we might... do to help then? What do we, what do we, other than obviously podcasts like this, but what do we do to stop the Nile apocalypse? That's tough because a lot of them are farmed and wild caught. And so there's not really a reason to breed Nile monitors uh, because of that. If that slowed down, if people started breeding, then I think that'd be great. But I think they should be like $2,500 lizards. Yeah. That's my opinion. It's It would deter a lot of people. Yeah. Is there anyone in the States um, captive breeding Niles? Or you don't know? I don't know, to be honest. Charge a lot if you are. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is the problem, though, isn't it? Because you you do that, you do all the work of breeding Niles. There was a guy in the UK that produced um, captive bred ornate um, Niles, and uh, I can't remember what he was selling them for, but they just weren't selling because there was obviously the, the wild caught ones. People yeah. weren't supporting him, so he had to keep dropping the price, dropping the price, dropping the price, and to the point where they were the same price as the wild caught. But because people didn't know about him. People were still buying wild caught from pet shops. And I was just like, Jesus Christ, man. But yeah. Yeah. It's, it's almost impossible. It's, there's no point in breeding almost. It's, it's sad. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's the same with Savannah's as well though. Like Savannah's there's again, a guy in the UK that captive breeds Savannah's and his Savannah's. <clears throat> I don't know exactly. So I don't want to, 
quoted, but I think they're like 150 pound and a Savannah in a pet shop's like 70 pound, 80 pound. So you're talking like double the price, but not a lot of money. Yeah. I have no idea why you'd buy the wild court. No idea why you'd buy the, but everyone still does. It's because people want a cheap animal. Um, but then they also expect it to act like, act like a captive bread. And then they aren't prepared to put the over a year of socialization that you've done into yours. People are expecting it within a week and then they just put it in the bath to tame it. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> I hate, honestly, I hate that. And I hate people that put them in completely. I've seen a few people put monitors in completely empty enclosures, like empty mm. enclosures. And then they're like, like if you, it was, oh, I can't think of, I can't think of his handle, but um, I think it's Living Art Reptiles or something like that. I'm sorry if you're watching it, but he put a post on his story and it was like, um, if you're putting your monitor's enclosure so bare and so barren um, that you are the only thing it can enrich, only thing it can enrich itself with, then you're not socializing your monitor. You're depressing your monitor to the point where it has to interact with you. And I don't think you could, like, I'm paraphrasing, but you couldn't word it better because if there's nothing for them to do in an enclosure, they're smart enough to know that they want to come out and interact with you and like, they need something to do, you know? Exactly. Yeah. It's. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I'm just, I'm just going through seeing if I've got any questions. I've not missed any questions. Like, again, I'm sorry, everyone, that I'm ignoring you, but you have to deal with it. So on then, so We've gone for a little bit of socialization. We've gone for a little bit of diet because I don't, I don't really want this to be like a care sheet. Um, but like, what would your three best pieces of advice be for someone looking to buy a Nile? Either they're in, inex- so let's just say three pieces of advice across the board, regardless if you're a keeper like myself or if you've never kept the lizard before. Like, what's the three golden things that you wish you knew going into Niles? Uh, what I wish I knew is the enclosure side size in the future, um, their temperament, and just how to approach them properly. Okay. And when you say approach it properly, my brain's going, what do you mean? Do you mean in how you socialize with them? Yeah. Yeah. Um, not, yeah, just trying to socialize, get them used to you, just kind of stuff like that. Because, yeah. you know, when you first bring in a monitor or any reptile, you're always so eager to be hands-on and, you know, be with it. I'm, but... I'm guilty for that myself, to be honest. Like, I just, like, maybe if I just touch you, then then it counts. But, yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Uh, good. Another good thing to learn is uh, when you do bring home a monitor, because I got mine from a pet store, and it was in a box. They gave me a box that was in it. Um uh, don't like reach in and grab it. Just kind of like open the box and leave it alone. Let them come out. Yeah. And I think that would help the beginning of the bonding experience a lot. No, no, I, I agree. I, I need to get better myself because I, when I first got the mangroves, I got them fresh from the import. So they were traveling for about three days. So they'd been traveling for three days and then I got them. Um, and I did just get them, put them straight into a bath um obviously to socialize them um filled with like electrolytes and stuff just to try and hydrate them i left them alone put them in like a tub with water i left them alone for 20 minutes came back and then i did put them into the enclosure but then I, I, i'll be completely honest i was so like excited i was like in their grill with phones i was like oh my god let me and then i look back on it in retrospect and i'm glad i made that video because it it does show me how happy i was but for the animals it must have been such a fucking ordeal they must have been like what the hell like being ripped from the wild three days in transit now all of a sudden this this random guy's just like oh you're the best thing ever so like again <laughs> i'm the, you know what i mean I'm, I'm gonna hold my hands up there's no point in being like oh yeah because i do agree you're i preach to people less is more leave them alone and then they're like yeah. paul look at your look at your instagram i'm like shut up <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> so I, I I think it's also important, like in any form of keeping, it's it's important to hold yourself accountable, though, isn't it? Because if you can be critical of yourself, you can become a better keeper. Yeah. People are yeah. going off on me in the chat now. 
people hate me. Oh, they do. Oh. <laughs> I've said that I was ignoring them. You guys, you uh, need to ask. If you want me to bring you up, you need to ask questions. If not, you can all talk amongst yourselves. So, with the Niles again, then, how do you think your relationship with Ziggy will go once you move into that big enclosure? Do you think that you've you've established enough of a relationship that he won't go back or do you think it'll be even better now that you can interact with him in his territory? I think for the first week, uh, I'm not going to be able to touch him because it's a bigger environment. You know, he might be a little stressed out. I've been trying to take him inside the enclosure to get used to it before he moves in, but we'll see. Are you ex- I bet you're really excited to get him in there. I am, dude. I am. Yeah. He already looks so small in there. Oh, sorry, dude. They are cool lizards, man. I do I do really like Niles. I just wish they didn't get so big. I like the bigness. <laughs> <laughs> my problem is I'd have to sell half my stuff just to be able to house a night. Like, I'd have to use half my reptile room just to house the Nile. It's a problem. Yeah. That's that. It's a, it's a hard one because, like, my brain is like, do I just have, say, for example, four mangroves and that's it, right? All, all in big walk-ins, or do I just have like right. what I have? And they're not nothing's in small enclosures, but everything, no matter how big you keep it, can be in bigger. So my brain at the minute is like, do I just have four massive enclosures for like some mangroves, or do I just carry on as I'm going and hope that in the future I can have 50 massive enclosures but you know it's a, it's such a hard thing to because like similar to like what you were saying with the snakes like these are I, there's about four animals in my collection that I could probably rehome the rest of them I'm like oh, I'm just too attached so yeah so I think we have another question um what's your Niles favorite meal and after about how long did you start noticing change in comfortability? I'm not sure what you mean by changes in comfortability. I guess around you, because I think you joined in late, um, but you said about a year before you actually really started, um, Ziggy really started to trust you. But what would you say Ziggy's favorite food is? Quails. Quails, yeah. Yeah, he, he loves quails. I don't know what they, What I imagine they would be, They'd be taking a lot of fish and birds in the wild, I imagine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They'll, they'll eat anything. They uh, now monitors. They're also known to be in packs, and with and to uh, one will distract a crocodile, and some others will eat the eggs. Yeah. So they'll they'll, they'll have everything, man. They'll just have snakes. They'll have birds. They'll have insects. They'll have everything. <laughs> yeah. No, they are they are cool. I learned about that whole um because I looked into this because my son was watching octonauts. Um, yeah. and there was some Niles and they were like, basically they'd been teleported into the Everglades, controversial. Um, <laughs> and they had to like round them up to get them back off to Africa, obviously. Um, and they were, yeah, they were working in a pack and there was like, they were like portrayed as velociraptors and they were working yeah. in this pack to like, um, trick the alligators. And I was like, shut up. So then I like <laughs> looked into it and there is like documented cases of like, um, like you say, them doing it in the wild, which is pretty cool. Like they're real life velociraptors, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I do, I do, I do find Niles. Um, if I'm honest, I think Nile monitors are probably one of my favorite monitor lizards on the planet. I just really, yeah, I love, I actually love them. But I just, I just can't justify, like you say, the space because I know how my brain works, and I would have to give one my entire reptile room. Uh, yeah. yeah. Have you ever been has Ziggy ever Ziggy ever bitten you like out of aggression rather than like food mistake you for food? But have you been properly bitten or no? Uh, kind of. Um, after the whole thing with that stuck shed, I started using a very soft toothbrush on him mm-hmm. and kind of just like get him wet and just kind of scrub him, kind of clean him, trying to get everything that I can't see. And he does. I feel like he thinks it's a snake or something because he wants to eat it. He actually yeah, turns yeah. around. And, he accidentally got my finger. It wasn't out of because he's mad or anything. It was just trying to get the toothbrush. Yeah. That was it. So with Siggy then, because I am curious, because obviously 
you've said it's taken just about a year to get him to the point of socialization and was huffy and puffy as a baby. Um, has you see, he's chilled out now? Was he an arsehole? Like, was he really an arsehole? Like, as did he have the stereotypical Niall and eventually you just work for it through like consistency and stuff, or was he from, from the jump not too bad? Yeah, he wasn't too bad. He there was he did puff up a lot, he did try to tail whip a lot, but he would also uh, was a little easy going, it was kind of 50 50, you know. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I think I think him personally, because I don't think he's ever been mistreated from the start. So I think he was a little okay. Um, I did try to work with another mo- Nile monitor. It was at a pet store, and I'm friends with the owner, and it was almost closing time. And it, it was like a little bigger than Ziggy, so kind of cranky, really defensive. They open up the enclosure for me. I put my hand in there. It puffs up. He's not moving. And then uh, one of my friends who owns it, uh he came in and said, oh you want to hold it i'm like no 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 i just want to you know work with it i just want to see how it's reacting and he comes in and just kind of like chases it around and tries to grab it i'm just like oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that sort of follows nicely into my next question then because i was gonna say where do you think the niles get their attitude from like where where does the reputation come from do you think it's people not knowing how to deal with them yeah, hundred percent. I I, I yeah. honestly think it's just people, and then they're like, then they'll blame the animal for it. Uh, it's I, I, when I worked with that defensive now monitor, it didn't run away from me. It did mm. what Ziggy did, just kind of stood his ground, just popped up. That's it. And then someone else came in who did improper handling. They ended up starting to freak out, you know. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's the people. Yeah. It's hard. yeah, I agree because, like you say, you put your hand in there. The animal's got the option to retreat to its safety of its enclosure if it wants to. Yeah. And then you're, you're allowing it time to process, okay, this hand is not coming to kill me. Mm-hmm. Let's start to think about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, it's this hand's turning up every day. There's clearly something, you know, so by what you're doing, you're allowing them to get to the use to you and interact with you. Whereas if you go in there with a the hand, a claw, like bloody Toy Story, and just go in there and chase them around, then it's going to be incredibly scary for them. I'm just going to shut my window because it it's getting cold in the UK now that we're getting to dark time. But yeah, like, so do you think that is where the, the whole stipulation from Niles monitors come from then? You think it is that they're just, they're just mistreated from the day they get here and then they end up just holding a massive grudge forever? Yeah, because, I mean, the, a lot of them are wild caught. And, like, okay, so, yeah, they are going to have that defensive behavior because uh, they're not being born around humans like most captive bred animals are. So they're a little bit better. But um, when they're this size, by two years, I mean, your Nile should be bonded with you, you know. Uh, Ziggy, he doesn't trust anybody else. He, only, he trusts his people that he met when he was a baby. But right yeah. now, if new people come, he doesn't trust them. I mean, it's the, it, it's a privilege to have his that much trust in me. Honestly, I can imagine it, it's a it's a great relationship. Like, well, going through your Instagram, it's definitely a great relationship. And like, as someone who understands it, I can see how much work you must have put into it. Because I I guess as well, the problem is with Niles, a lot of people would be where you were at the month mark, two month mark, six six month mark, and they go, oh bugger i need to upgrade this lizard and then just pass it on but they haven't put in the time in that six months that lizard's then passed on to someone else who's not going to put the time in and then all of a sudden this you've got this two-year-old nile monitor that's three to four foot long that has never had a good imprint from humans and it's just too late it's not it's never too late but there's not many people to any people that are willing to put the dedication and time into an already four foot angry nile monitor you know yeah which is sad, but I guess that is a reality. It is. Um, yeah, like uh, Brian on YouTube with Chicken Strip. Mm. Have you seen this Nile monitor? Yeah, the albino one. It's like a four or five foot Nile, and it's just like crazy. And then he does the whole force handling thing, and then it's like mouth open breathing. And he's like, eh, now see, now it's calm down. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> I, no, I completely agree. Like, and I. I I'll be honest, like, obviously I wish him all the best and I don't wish it on him at all. 
but I don't agree with how he socialises his Varadas because I don't agree with anyone. This is not even an attack on him, but I 100% agree with you because I've, I've watched that video before and I was just like, I'm just clicking off because I'm just like, I just, I just can't support it because you're putting out there to millions of people. This is how you should handle a monitor. And again, I unfollowed someone who had like 300 followers that did it. So it's not like, but I just, I just can't, I can't, I don't understand how people like, like you say with the bath, people are like, Oh yeah, put your monitor in the bath. It will swim to you because it wants to get out of the water in it and associate you with safety. Like what the fuck? Like who fucking <laughs> thought that was a good idea? Like who thought that idea up? I guess like, I don't know. Like, I don't know what your opinion on it is, but I'm assuming it's the same people who bloody decided to put orcas in sea world. Like that's the sort of people that are thinking of these fucking ideas. And it's just yeah. like, Oh Yeah. It's yeah, I, I got, because I'll be completely honest. I, I've never worked with a Nile. I've I've experienced them in shops, um, but again, people are just going in there, grabbing them out, and bits and bobs. So, if someone is generally serious about getting a Nile, where would you recommend they get one from? Do you think they should get one from Craigslist? Do you think they should get one from a shop? Do you think they should try and get one? Obviously, captive bred. Obviously, but let's just say we're not going to get a captive bred one because most people aren't. Do they get them fresh from an import as soon as the shop gets them? Get them straight away. Like, what's what's your advice for someone who is generally serious? Honestly, yeah, because Captain Brad is gonna be super rare. So yeah. honestly, the pet shop, Craigslist. Um, I, I mean, yeah, one of those two. But uh, just try and look for their weight. Their if they're underweight, you can see it in their tail. Their tails are kind of sucking in. Um, I personally probably wouldn't go with that because there could be possible parasites and then, or it'll probably die next week. Um, just try finding something healthy in a pet store or something. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you do come across a captive bread from some guy on Instagram or something, then I will go for that 100%. But it's just going to be super hard to find. Yeah, I, to my knowledge, I don't know anyone captive breeding Niles. Again, there's someone here who's done all Nates. Um, but I don't know if he'll ever do it again because he struggled to sell them. So it's not. So just a controversial question that's just popped into my brain. If you could stop the importation of Nile monitors tomorrow, would you? I got the space. I don't have the money. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, then I got to build two of these and then you have to socialize. It's a lot of it's a lot of work. It's, I would love to. It would be really cool because they even look like little dinosaurs coming out of the eggs, <laughs> like with the Dominus Rex and Jurassic World. You could have Ooh. your own little pack. You'd be like Owen and like be on a motorbike and have your Niles like following you down the road. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, I think that would be a super rewarding thing to do. It's just me personally. I think I'm limited to one big lizard. It's a yeah. lot more work than a lot of people think. No, I don't. I don't doubt that. I, I don't. I don't doubt that at all. So, have you got your eyes set on any small lizards? Obviously, you got your beardy, but you got any any more plans for any more varanids, or you you nailed out? Actually, yeah. If I can uh, build a bigger facility, I would love to get my hand on a green tree monitor. Okay. Yeah. I would love to have one of those. Those things are super <laughs> rad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got three of my own. So yeah, I uh, <laughs> I, I know that all too well. But yeah, no, they are the Prasinas are very cool. They're um they're incredibly, incredibly smart. Like I've worked with a lot of monitor lizards and green tree monitors, they're right up there with like the most smart varanas that I've worked with. Yeah. I've seen videos of people putting like crickets or mice in these tubes, and then these green trees will just be like, you know, just reaching in and just pulling it out. Yeah. I did well, I did it with mine. Um Maybe it was your video. I doing that then <laughs> i have i have done it with my big male um and i'll be completely honest i don't know why i didn't do it sooner because i knew that they did it and i just it just slipped my mind so i made one one day and to my knowledge he's never done it because he was a wild caught um baby so he might have done it as a baby because my friend i'd have to find a video i'll do that in a minute because it's so cool to see i'm going to talk as i'm going to find it because it's actually such a sick video so if he's i don't know if he's in chat or not but he was earlier but my friend matt who breeds tree monitors who bred my baby um he caught a video of a baby one like actually digging um for food as as a baby but like i did it with mine um 
and I'd never done it before him ever. And he just knew to do it, like instantaneously knew to do it. Matt's getting free promo right now. I don't know where it is, but thankfully he doesn't post much so I can find it. Because if this was my page, I would never have been able to find it. But like, this is like a ba- nine weeks old and that Prasinus, like from like, oh God, what happened? It went, oh God. Technical difficulties. Okay, we're back. From nine weeks old, that Prasinus like knew just how to like, like, like look at, how, can, how can you not love that? Like, look at that. Yeah. Dude, it's that is just so cool. I mean, that thing's nine weeks old, and like, it's just literally, it's found something. It's like, right, okay, I'm gonna use my hand to like get. They just, they're born. Like, it's obviously an innate trait. It's not taught because that animal. How? Where's that animal learn that from? You know, like, it's in them just to know to do it. Dude, I love how smart they are. It's incredible. But yeah, Matt's um, he's a great friend of mine, and he, like I say, he bred. He bred my baby. Um, I have two. My male is currently with him. But like he, I've done this with my green tree. This is my one of my recent reels. But this is a very cool video. Like his black tree monitor just coming out onto this tightrope. So I feel you can do such cool stuff with tree monitors, man. So he's getting lots of free promo now. But yeah, tree monitors are and Dan's after blue trees. One day, Dan. One day Matt will be breeding them because he does have blue trees. Um, he's got like one of the maddest collections in the UK. So I've deliberately befriended him so I could steal all of his lizards. Um, but like, I don't even know where I'm going now. Um, let's get off this remove. But yeah, um, so green trees. Everyone in chats for the tree monitors. Blue trees, dream. Love green trees. Blue is my favorite. Dan's after a blue. Michael wants the greens. Blues Riddler wants a Prasinus. Everyone wants Prasinus. Everyone's here for Prasinus. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll get um, Boss Exotics back on when he finally gets the Prasinus. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it. Would you breed them or would you just want one as a pet? I, I would just keep one. Not breed. Yeah. Do you breed anything? Or are you literally, or you're planning on breeding anything? Or have you just, just pets? Uh, I'm actually going to be getting some California red snakes here very soon, um, and I'm going to breed those. I really want to be able to get more money and then put more money back into my animals. Yeah, yeah that's fair enough. A little shoulder dragon you've got there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. They are cool, man. Like, there you go, Becca, I'm sure. I want a black tree on her. They, I, honestly, Niles are almost like super-sized mangroves, so I'm like, they're super sick. Um, but I just can't justify the space. The spacing. Yeah. Maybe one day, excuse me. Maybe one day I will. Um, when I'm like I don't know, fifty, and I'm having a midlife crisis, I'll just like <laughs> rehome, rehome like five of them and try and breed them. But that's super. Like he's so inquisitive as well with it. Like he's not even. Like, you can tell as well with the body language, like the way that they're moving. You can see that he's not stressed at all because like the head's moving, like the tongue's going. And like he's slow and deliberate, so you can see that he's clearly got a relationship with you, which is that's why I've reached out to you and wanted you to come on because you clearly are doing something right with him for sure, man. There you go. I wouldn't do that with my mangrove, like, no way, (laughs) no way. People keep saying to me, like, put mango on your shoulder. I'm like, no, I I won't have a face left. See, Paul, you're doing it with mango. No, I'm not doing that with mango. I'm I don't have balls big enough to do that with mango. Like, I'll do it with my peach fruit. Yeah, I do it with my peach fruit. Imagine that, double the size as well. If he's three foot. Yeah, it's gonna hurt. How are the claws? <laughs> do you, Do you trim them or do you just leave it? No, I uh, I leave it. Um, I like naturally file them down. I have some rocks in there for right now, and then this his enclosure is uh cement it's quickery so it'll naturally yeah, yeah. fall down his nails because you know 18 19 pound lizards that ow, that loves to climb <laughs> you know they, they kind of need those nails to hold their body weight up yeah for sure i don't i don't believe in people cutting the monitor's nails so i'm glad that you just do it naturally because i'm the same i just leave them to it i got mango to come up my leg the other day for some food um 
but I just never wear trousers, so I was doing it in shorts. The second she touched me, I was just bleeding. I was like, oh, what have I done? <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's cool to see, mate. It's cool to sort of see, obviously, the server side of the world, but it's cool to see, like, because obviously I'm just watching it for a screen now, but when I see it on Instagram, I'm like, that's so cool. But, like, there he is in the flesh, just get him out, comes out, chill as. I guess yeah. it's got to the point now where you can just pretty much pick him up and it won't, won't yeah. care. He's, I can play with his little hands. Don't, he likes, still likes to jump. <laughs> Faye's come up with a good question. Um, what if the claw gets stuck in an earring? <laughs> ah. There you go. You <laughs> find, out, to, find out live. <laughs> you have to just deal with it. Because, yeah, I mean, they're just going to wreck you up. They like to go high, though, don't they? They want to see what's going on. So they like to go climb to the head. That's what they want to do. They always yeah. go up. I'm already bleeding on my arm. <laughs> God help. Well, you, I guess you won't be able to do that when it's five foot, six foot long. It'd be too much. Yeah, right, right now, he's three feet. You do see people with putting a six foot lizard. How, how t if it's not too personal, how tall are you, if you don't mind me asking? Five eight. There you go. Same height as me. So, well, technically I'm a little bit shorter, but I don't tell anyone. Five eight in shoes. You always round up. Oh, so you, yeah. you're going to have a lizard that's a good, good bit bigger than you, which is exciting. <laughs> it's going honestly when when he's in there, that's going to be so sick. Have you got a rough deadline date when you want to realistically get it done by, or are you just taking your time with it? Um. Once I can get the Mr. Zen door in, um, and then I get the pond to the point where I can drain it outside of this shop, I'll probably move him in then. But as he's living in there, I'll probably still upgrade things. Yeah. After he acclimates, and then after he's used to that place, and I can walk in there and do what I need to do. It's going to be cool to. Um probably have proper proper swimming like a nice big pond where they can because obviously they are i mean people have seen videos of them in the world they do just they are like mini crocodiles in their own they're, they're, they're almost like because i've seen lots of videos in the wild where they raid um as like bird nests on riverbanks so they swim climb dig dip. yep so they're, they're all terrain like they're like the tanks of the um the monitor world which they're yeah. pretty cool They'll even sleep in water. Ziggy yeah, so I, sleeps in his water all night. I have that with my mangroves sometimes. Like when I first started keeping mangroves, I was like, "Oh my god, is she dead?" Because it was just the nose sticking out of the water, and like on the yeah. side of the tub like that, just the nose. And I'm like, and she's like, "What the fuck?" And I'm like, "Oh god, thank <laughs> god," because I thought she just like drowned. But yeah, they just sleep in the water. So it's kind of crazy. They they, they are very cool lizards. I know. Uh, Nile monitors, their adaptation for that, their nostrils are actually like on top mm. of the muzzle. So they can like peek up, barely any head over the water and everything. It's really cool. They are, they are very cool. You've made me want to, I, I think the problem is with this podcast, like now I want to get a Nile monitor because I like <laughs> them anyway. I know I, I can't, which is good because I know I can't. If they were only like three, four foot, I'd be like, oh, yeah. but I know I can't. Um, but the colors as well, like the olive greens and the black stripes and the bands on a Nile monitor is like, you can't, I can understand why people get them, especially as babies, because a pet shop that I'm going to, um, soon, they've got some babies in. And again, I'm not going to go in there and play with them, but just seeing them is going to be exciting. So Fee says, no, don't worry, Fee, we're not going to get a Nile monitor. It's going to be fine. Yeah. Not until I'm 50 when I'm having a midlife crisis and I buy four. <laughs> probably one of the only few monitors that I can afford right now, actually. Because <laughs> like, I think I could probably pick a couple up for about 50 quid. Which is ridiculous. Because then it would take about five grand to build an enclosure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to have the space and dedication. So is there is there anything we haven't touched on? that you want to go over is there anything you want to ask me is there anything like any disclaimers you want to give to people like 
anything else you want to talk about? I don't, I don't think so. I think we covered everything. We got the feeding and handling and what to expect. It takes a long time to get a bond with them, so don't give up. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't, like I say, I don't script my podcasts. Um, and I didn't want it to be like a care guide. Obviously, it's good to touch on stuff for sure. Yeah. But I like, I like that it's more just a conversation and it just goes and things just go in my head. Um, like where and what and how. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm just trying to think of a, I've got two wrap up questions at the end, which I haven't, I've, I have to remember because it's been a while since I've had a guest on. Um, but yeah, if you're happy to start wrap, wrapping up, winding down, because we've been going for nearly an hour and a half now. So unless there's anything else you want to touch on, we can um, start to wrap up. What do you feel about goldfish? <laughs> what, feeding them? Is yeah. It, uh, well, I forget what it is. The enzyme, is it? <laughs> I want to say thylacine, but I swear that's a fucking Tasmanian devil. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I forget what they're called. To be honest... I can't think of what it's called. Do you know? Do you know what it is? I know. I don't know what it is, but it's slipping my brain now. It, it's, it's uh, like it. thymazine or something. It's something it's like just... that, isn't it? But in my head, phyla, I'm saying thylacine, which is obviously the Tasmanian tiger. Um, but yeah, I'd, I I do um, equivalent of silver sides, which are I can't think what they're called over here. I do a lot of um, fresh caught crab. I catch crab myself. Thymazine, I think. I don't know. Bam's coming up with it, but. I, goldfish are full of nasty shit. That's what that's what I think about goldfish. <laughs> Michael's a fish man, and he's just looking at me disapproving. But no, I feed. So for me, I do a lot of crab. Um, I do a lot of um, I do a lot of shrimp. So like um, crayfish. I do a lot of um, bugs, but they're a lot smaller than mangroves. Um, I do I do mackerel, herring, trout um octopus squid um mussels i do locust cockroaches i don't do crickets because fuck crickets um i do grubs i do the odd rat pup now and then but i really make a run for it um and then i do chicks that's pretty much what my mangroves get normally um so a good range in there but i i i've never done live anything um yeah yeah i don't really agree with it um i had uh, when i first caught crabs so (laughs) (laughs) someone clip it (laughs) when i first caught crabs sorry to tell you how sorry to tell you like this fee but when I first caught crabs, um, I brought them home, <laughs> and I was like, um, I could I could just put them straight in the water bowl with her yeah. to to watch her hunt crabs. Um, but then I was like, I was worried about parasites and nasties, so I probably yeah. killed them, froze them for like two months, and then defrosted them. But she goes crazy for like beach caught crabs. She go she loves like, and then watching her like grab them and break their claws off. And then swallow them. It's almost like she just knows that she can't eat the claws. Um, it's fucking incredible. And then when I feed her, like, um, I fucking forget what they're called. But they're basically, um, they're like crayfish, but they have really long pincers. Um, she just snaps the pincers off and then eats it and then leaves the pincers in the enclosure. So it's got to the point where I just snap them off myself now. It's cool to watch her do it, but then going in there to clean up her mess is just not worth it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I... I've got lots of um, Paul's. Paul's got crabs. Paul does have crabs. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Sorry to tell you like this, V. But yeah, that's what I. I remember the first time I fed her a fish that was too big for her just to swallow, um, and she was actually like ripping it apart. Like she put one hand on it, used the other claw to rake it and rip it, and then yeah. would then pick little bits out, which was so. And I was like, oh, maybe that's just like fluke. Um, and then she done it again with a separate fish and then i've seen it in some of my baby ones as well so it's clearly something they do which is um which is cool to see but i imagine obviously you're going to get to the point what well, there's obviously large fish but you're going to get to the point where ziggy's going to be able to eat just anything whole like whoop, straight down yeah yeah it's gonna be more expensive by, by the time he gets bigger because then it's 
more food, bigger bulk, more price. It's just yeah. Expensive. <laughs> How much have you got a rough idea in your head? Rough, just roughly, what the Nile monitor costs to feed in a week or a month, just on average, off the top of your head. Kind of varies just because his diet is different, his prices are different. Yeah, I would say maybe maybe thirty bucks every week and a half. Oh yeah, so look, so someone getting a Nile needs to allow between 100, 150 on average a month just just to feed it. I think so because he eats like a, so I'll feed him maybe like five quails and two shrimp mm -hmm. uh, and a quail bag from Rota Pro is what, like 80 bucks? And Not there's a hundred of yeah. them in there. So you're feeding yeah, yeah, him yeah. like four at a time. It goes by quick. Yeah, that's the problem though. They, they get big, um, so they eat lots. Like for me, do you, um, we're going back into tangents now, but it's fine. Do you season him at all in the sense of giving him a wet season, a dry season, a hot season, a cold season, or do you just let your weather do what your weather does and you stick to your same parameters? I, I just stick with what happens. I don't yeah. on lower temps, raise them or anything. I just, because I mean, I think that's more for breeding. Yeah, it more or less is. Yeah, it is for breeding, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's, he stays at what he stays at right now. That's fair enough. So what what sort of temps? Because obviously one twenty five basking. Um, what sort of temps do you let it go down to? Are you not? Because I personally don't really care. Like if it gets down to like sixty eight in my winter, I don't really care as long as I've got a decent basking. Um, yeah. Or do you, or do you are you are you worried about it or do you just not really care? Because I don't care personally. Well, so I have a mini split in this room. I can control the temperature in here. Um, so at nighttime, everything is usually around like 77 at night. Okay. Um, right now during the day, you know, he has the 125 basking or whatever, and it's like 80, 83 Fahrenheit for ambient. Um, then he has his big water dish in there too, if he ever wants to cool down or something. Yeah, that's, that's good. Cause I think a lot of people overheat monitors. I think a lot of people keep them at like 90 ambient. Um, 88 ambient if I'm getting my Fahrenheit's right because obviously I'm Celsius over here right. but people people get them at like 28 to 32 which I'm pretty sure is like 86 um, to like 90 and then they're just running on all cylinders all the time and yeah. they do need to get cold and I think people forget that like obviously they need the hot but they yeah. they need to be able to get cold um, and the basking spot is just so it's good that you're doing a raised one because it's so easy to isolate it. And then the rest of the enclosure doesn't have to be stupidly hot. It's still going to be hot for like us to walk into, but for Ziggy, yeah. he's just going to be at a nice ambient, can use a lot more of the space because it's not ridiculously hot. Um, and I think a lot of people forget that. And when you've got smaller enclosures, like a four by two by two, it's quite hard to achieve 125 degree basking because babies still want to be basking at 110, 115, 120. Um, and then have your, like you say, your 83, 82 84 degree ambience so it's that's why glass is good because you can get a hot basking spot for the exoterrace you can get the hot basking spot and the rest of the enclosure is nice and nice and cool yep. Yep. what sort of humidity do you roughly how often do you spray and what roughly is your hu humidity you normally kicking around at yeah i spray them every day so in the beginning i was doing 60 percent humidity and from the it was working great. It, it really was until that one time that he lost like 16 cents of his tail because uh, mm -hmm. the internet will tell you 60%. Um, so I raise it up. So I keep it at 65. Then when he's shedding, like right now, I keep it at 70. Um, it, it is really humid in Africa where these guys are from. Mm -hmm. And now he has no issues with shedding so i would personally say 65 and then 70 percent while they're just blowing up and shed yeah yeah i don't i'll be honest i don't really monitor mine but it is it is right around the 60 65 but what i do is i'll spray them soak them and then just allow it to drop and then spray them soak them once everything starts to dry out again i'll spray them soak them allow it to drop so sometimes i'm spraying every day sometimes i'm spraying 
twice a week, but I also season mine. Um, so it's completely different. But yeah, I don't, because when I say to people, oh, I haven't sprayed it in a week, and they're like, well, what? And I'm like, yeah, but the enclosure is still 60%, and I'm they're not shedding, and I'm in a drier period right now. So yeah. I, I don't need to spray. Um, because again, I think people over it's good to overcomplicate because then if you're stressing too much, then less likely things are going to go wrong. But I think people do overcomplicate um, some things because some people will tell you that you need to spray in the morning and then spray it at night. But then, once if you have a cold snap at night and then you spray it at night, then all of a sudden the enclosure is getting wet and cold, and like, now your lizard wakes up with a respiratory infection. Yeah. So sometimes you can be your worst en own worst enemy by stressing too much, you know? Yep. That's a. Uh... With my snake here, my mangrove snake, it needs 70% humidity and 85 uh, degrees, which can be a little difficult if you have a heat bulb, you know, it'll kind of drain away that humidity. Uh, I don't use a heat bulb, and it is 85 Fahrenheit right now. It is it's 76, and I haven't sprayed it for like two days. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's... it's yeah, I, I try and keep my enclosures depending on the species, but like, I'll spray all of my monitors once a week, um, no matter the species. So like my Ackies get massively sprayed down once a week. My Kimberleys get sprayed down every three or four days. But like when people are like, oh, why are you spraying them? I'm like, but I'm not soaking them. I'm just getting it wet. It completely dries out within an hour or two, and it just spikes the humidity for a few days. And then I'll leave it for five days to go back down. And I think people are like, oh, my God, because oh, like, you just hear completely off subject to Niles, but you hear like, oh, it's an Aki, it's from the desert. But where do Aki spend all their time? They spend all their time underground in humid burrows. So if your enclosure is a little bit more humid, then they're going to spend a bit more time above ground, you know? So I think it's, again, that overcomplicating can sometimes make it worse than just <laughs> sim than simplifying it, you know? Exactly. So... But yeah, so like I say, I'm I'm not in an immediate rush, but I I can't really, I think, I think I've covered everything that I sort of has triggered my brain. Um, I think. So like I say, unless there's anything else that you want to ask me, I've got two wrap up questions which I end podcasts on, um, and then we'll wrap this up and get out of here. So is there anything else you want to touch on? No, I think we covered most of it. Okay, so first first wrap up question is: What's your advice to someone starting the reptile hobby? Just brand new novice, never kept a reptile before. What's the one piece of advice you can give to them? Uh, oh well, um, find what really interests you. I, I feel like if people just buy something because they think it's going to be easy, they're not going to end up being passionate about that animal and that could lead to bad uh, husbandry and care in the future because you know you're not excited about it it's like yeah i had this because someone told me it's a good snake to start with or a good lizard to start with uh, you know you might lose interest and so i would i would look for something that you really really like uh, you know if you really like colubrids i would personally tell you to start out with like a pine or a gopher because they're dumpster snakes you know they require low mid-range humidity they're they're really easy i like the size of them i don't know i mean someone might not like the size of them they're pretty big snakes but super easy to take care of and i think they will like that um and if someone asks like first venomous it's like no nah, there really is no first venomous <laughs> just find a mentor you know like because i thought i wanted vipers and then i realized i fell in love with elapids and that's my what i'm passionate about is elapids you know so uh if you're getting into something, do, really do your research for months. You know, if you have this one animal in mind, just sleep on the animal for like two months. And if you're still thinking about that animal, there's a chance that you are going to be passionate about that animal. For sure, man. 100%. I, I couldn't agree more. I think beginner species are obviously beginner species because they're more resistant to mistakes. But if you really wanted an Aki but the pet shop sells you on a bearded dragon within six months, you're going to be bored of the bearded dragon. Another one's in a rescue and you're buying an Aki anyway. So if you just spend that extra three or four months researching and then learning from people and preparing, having an enclosure set up for months, so you know, the parameters are right, then you can get the Aki, you know? So I hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent agree with that. And uh, that's, it's always worded different, but that normally seems to be the thing like, 
So, but I like, I like, the, I like that 100. And then the final wrap up question, which everyone gets stumped with, um, other than Father Blue, who just sort of smashed it out of the park. But um, I think it was Father Blue. Anyway, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given, not reptile related? I don't think I have one. <laughs> so mine is it's changed at the moment um it's what it used to be in the i always gave the same answer was um sometimes you find yourself in a dark place but remember um seeds have to be planted in order to grow but currently my favorite is it's which is more of a saying but it's also i guess advice is people that love flowers water them people that only like them pick them which I quite like. That's a good one. Yeah, just quite like it. Just sort of lets you almost, I guess, like with the lizards, that sort of thing with the lizards. If if you really love it, just leave it. Leave it be. Leave it alone. If you like it, you're going to go in there and pick it up and you're going to be like a little giddy kid and be like, oh, cool, look at my mangrove, look at my Nile. But if you really love that lizard and you're really passionate, you're not going to pick it. You're just going to leave it alone and you're going to let it grow and you're going to let it blossom. So I guess in that sense, that I like that. Because that's sort of where I am with my brain right now. Yeah, that's a good one. You can steal yeah. it if you like. I might, yeah. I don't have anything. <laughs> no, no, it's fine, man. Well, it's been a, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Like we've spoken yeah. briefly, but it's, this I've really, really enjoyed this. And sim, it seems that our philosophies are very aligned with keeping, um, which is always nice because I never know how these things are going to go. <laughs> but I've really enjoyed your time, so I hope. Um, hope you've enjoyed mine and i hope that you've enjoyed this and i hope everyone has enjoyed i will put your links in description if anyone's interested to follow you but thank you so much for coming on man. i what i i'm not just saying it to like blow smoke up your ass but like when i saw that enclosure i commented and i was like is like is that for you or not whatever i said and i was like all excited about it because i don't think i've ever seen a nile enclosure like that big and i was like outside of like zoo situations um so I messaged you and I was like, I'm going to call on a podcast. <laughs> like, cause just from that, and then I went, for, and I didn't even go through your page. Like I went through your page and I was like, fucking invite this guy on this podcast. I don't know what he's about. And then I saw the interactions you have with Ziggy and I was like, mate, this guy clearly doing something right. I didn't know if you'd force handled him and stressed him into that. But now talking to you, I know that like you clearly love these animals and you're leaving them to do their own thing. So I, I really, really am thankful for you coming on and spreading some wisdom and light on Nile monitors. And I really appreciate yeah. you. It's, I, thanks for having me. I, I was really excited to talk about now monitors because I feel like a lot more should be talked about instead of just people buying them not knowing. So if there's more information, you know, I feel like a lot of people can take that and then apply it. So and hopefully, yeah. it'll be a lot nicer now monitors in the future. <laughs> <laughs> what, what I need to do is find a bit. I might just do it now to save myself a job. Um, so I, I future Paul, remember this is at the end of the podcast. So everyone, the takeaway from this podcast is just leave your Nile monitors the fuck alone. <laughs> just leave them alone. Interact with them on their terms. Yeah, Don't piss 100%. them off. <laughs> Realize that they're going to need an entire bedroom and then you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if you can withstand not always grabbing them, if you can have the space and money, then I say go for it. Um, and don't feel bad or like you're annoying someone with questions um if someone's an asshole to you about questions just keep asking you will find someone that will be nice uh yeah you know if you can do all this i now monitors are fucking great i i love them they, they can be really good pets uh it's just a matter of if you have patience time money knowledge and, you know. yeah yeah it's it's it's, it's mainly the the money, the space, and the time. They they demand all Varanids demand a lot of the free, but right. Niles are definitely there. They're up in my opinion, they're up there with crop monitors because in the wrong hands, like they are they're gonna do just as much damage. The teeth aren't as bad and the jaws but right. in the wrong hands and Nile is still gonna do damage, life changing damage. So you have to be and that's not me villainizing them or demon like demonizing them, but they are a big lizard. They are a fierce and predator so you do have to but like you say start on that right foot from day one and let this animal know that do you know what i'm your friend and i'm not gonna piss you off i'm not gonna push you 
And I think if you're in that mindset of, well, it's my animal, I can do what I want with it. One, I don't think you should own animals. And two, you should definitely stay away from animals that can hurt. You. <laughs> so. Yeah, exactly. I mean, lay on the floor, be on your phone, play phone games in front of your Nile monitor. Just you know, let them see you, you know, don't be a threat. And then they're really smart. I mean, just doing that, they'll know you're not a threat eventually. So. Yeah, for sure. I noticed it with the mangroves. Like when I've, I've only had them four months, so I'm still very new into my journey. But like, they see me, they run off. They see me, they run off. They see me, they run off. They see me, they stay out for ten seconds. They run off, and now we're getting to about the thirty-five second, forty-second mark. <laughs> so after four months, they're just and like, I made a video. I don't know if it's out yet. I've forgotten, but no, it's not out yet. But I basically say in it like five things i wish i knew before getting mangroves and one of the things is that you'll never see them so like i'm filming all my mangrove stuff and they're just empty enclosures because that is the reality of owning a mangrove in yeah. the first six eight ten months um but like i say man I, honestly i can't wait to see the enclosure like progress i can't wait to see ziggy in there like sleeping in that massive water bowl and basking on that big platform you know and it sounds like you've got even more plans for the future so I, i'm looking forward to like keeping an eye on what you're doing because i really like people that have one obviously you have multiple animals but we're just talking monitors you have the one animal and you've dedicated a lot of time money energy space to this one animal to allow it to rather than just do it like me getting loads of animals having them in okay conditions you're going just above and beyond for one and i i really fuck with people like that because i if i could have my time again i would like to think that i would go that route so i really yeah. respect you for doing that because I do, as I've grown as a keeper, I do realise that less is more, but now I'm sort of attached to these bloody animals that I can't get rid of. So <laughs> I um, I do really respect, I'm getting all choked up. I do really respect that you're really putting the time and energy into this one animal. And it actually generally makes me so excited. And like I say, when I saw your post, I was just like, I need to reach out to this guy because I could just tell from just looking at what you're doing because i know that's not going to be cheap and doing it for a 50 dollar lizard you know like fair play to you yeah. that price doesn't matter man they, these animals they they need this you know they deserve oh 100 they're all sentient they're all sentient, yeah. they're all sentient. Yeah. You are making me jealous, though. I wish I could give Mango something like that, but I'm not. I'm not there yet. <laughs> Maybe one day when, like, she's on her deathbed, and she can't yeah. even use any of it because she's got like arthritis in her knees from running around too much. Then yeah. I'll finally give her a big enclosure. But no, it's. I, I'm generally really excited for you and for Ziggy because, like, I know a lot of Niles don't get half the treatment. So, fair play it to sucks. you. It sucks. It sucks because their attitudes. You know, once you're like, once they trust you. It's super rewarding. And then it's really rewarding to see him not trust someone, but then trust you. It's like, <laughs> it's like awesome. Like I like, you're here, you know, I'm over up here with Ziggy. It's like, yeah, yeah that's really yeah. cool. Uh, yeah. But I mean, some people can't handle him, but like I said, uh, people that have handled him as a baby, he knows still, but he can still like my buddy, uh, he can feed Ziggy like on his stomach and then he would go on top of my fiance's head. But, if someone else randomly comes, you know, he's just like, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool though. Like I remember when we were living in the flat, so mango was housed in my kitchen because it was the only place big enough for her six by three by three. And Fee would get ready for work in the morning and she'd go into the kitchen and this would be like six o'clock in the morning. So all the lights are off and then mango would just smash the glass as this to be like, fuck off bitch and you'd hear <laughs> fee in the morning going fuck off mango and like mango would be like fuck off back i feel like she wouldn't do that with me so yeah it's so interesting how it's almost like mango knew she was like i've got beef with you girl and fee's like i've got beef with you and she's got better now like now she's in a bit more space and she's given more time fee can approach the glass and see mango mango hates me so they have a better relationship now but it just goes to show you when you do give them that little bit more space, you do give them that little bit more time. You do give them like a bit of the, cause now they're in a separate reptile room. They're not in my fucking kitchen. So they don't have to get disturbed and stuff. You know what I mean? So yeah. they do, um, the, it does go a long way. So yeah. It does. Yeah. We all know the rules of that house. See mango. Yeah. So 
But yeah, so unless, like I say, unless there's anything further, I'm going to politely kick you, wrap up, and say goodbye to everybody. <laughs> um, and like I say, I'll, I'll link once this is it, well, it stays live anyway. I'm pretty sure I already put your description in there, but I will link your stuff. Um, everyone, check him out. Say Paul sent you. Um, and yeah, like I say, I appreciate your wisdom and knowledge because I don't know many people doing Nile monitors properly. So fair play to you for putting the time in because you've only learned it through. It sounds so cliche, but you've only learned it through learning it. You know what I mean? You've had no true, you've had your mentor with the Salvador eye and stuff like that, but you've learned Ziggy and in return, Ziggy's given you this great relationship. So like fair play. I appreciate that. It means a lot. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's you're doing good work. No, you're doing good work. And I'm generally, I'm generally so excited to sort of see how it comes and how it progresses. Cause like I say, they're one of my favorite monitors. Now talking to you, I'm like, oh, maybe I could get one. I know I can't. I haven't got the space. Um, I'm like, oh, if I get a baby, then I've got two years to have it. <laughs> but that's irresponsible, guys. Don't do it. Um, but like I say, I'm I'm excited. I'm going to live vicariously through your page now. I'm going to keep a close eye. Um, well, as soon as I saw, like I say, I don't know what I hadn't seen before. It obviously just popped up to me, and I saw the enclosure. And ever since then, I have been looking on your page to like get an eye on one to fix this. <laughs> and like every time he's like on you. Did you see how red and yellow he was when he was younger? I don't know if I've been far back. I will have a look, though. But I think yeah. I know what you mean. On the back of the neck? No, whole body. All whole red. Body. Okay. Yeah, dude. I'll send you a photo. It's, yeah, yeah. Send me some pictures. Yeah, man. Because I've never seen a Nile like that. I was trying like to do research, and it was like a West African Nile monitor, apparently, is like a locality. Oh, sick. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I wish you would have kept it. He's kind of like brownish now. But yeah, it was really freaking cool, dude. He was super pretty. I'll tag you on the post. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Yeah, send it over. I'll, I'll, uh, <laughs> it's going to make me want one more. I'm excited to go see the baby <laughs> soon. But like, again, I'll, I'll, I'll take your advice and I'll be the bigger person and I, I'll just put my hand in there and I'll just be like, I'm just going to leave him be. I'm just going to see if they want to come over. Because I say to a lot of people as well, I say, get an animal to completely trust you and come onto your hand in its enclosure. And then when it does it 10 out of 10 times and it's completely comfortable and secure, then start to take them out of the enclosure on your hand because they then have got to the point where they do associate you with safety. Because as soon as you take them out of the enclosure, they're all of a sudden in a completely different world. So they're like, what the fuck? So it can <laughs> overstimulate their brain. So you do need to get them used to, one, their enclosure, then two, you, then three, you in their enclosure, and yeah. then four, out of the enclosure. So there's so much, so much time and energy that goes in, into it that people just don't realise. But that's why conversations like this are important, because for the people that do care to listen, hopefully they can take something away from it and be like... Yeah. Uh, so Gary's going to be like, now, don't get a gnarm on it, Gary. You're not ready. I've got a whole storage <laughs> unit I can convert. It's 25 by 15 by 8. Okay, Gary, I take it back. You can get an eye on monitor. 25 yeah. by 15 by 8. There you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, yeah, so like I say, man, I, I, I really appreciate you. I really appreciate your time. I, I like your, your page is cool, and even, like, the, your venomous and stuff, they're all kept in um, – from what I can see, I haven't got a fucking clue to be honest, but they're all in the sense of how you're supposed to keep venomous. But I see some people keeping venomous, and then I see how you keep your venomous, and I'll just put it that way. So I like the way that you keep yours in comparison to some people that I see online that keep venomous. So, so all of your stuff seems to be in pretty sick enclosures, and like I say, mainly Ziggy for me is a very exciting point of your page. <laughs> I appreciate it, dude. No, no worries. Well, like I say, I'm politely going to click, uh, kick you, and then if you want to either dip or you can stick around to the end and we can chat at the end if you want to, that's completely up to you. But then I'm just going to wrap up, and then that's that. That's us done. So thank you very much again for your time, everyone. Thanks in chat, and I'll um, it's up, like I say, if you've got somewhere to be, then um, obviously dip out, and if not, I'll once I end this, we can catch up afterwards. So yeah. no worries. Right. I don't know if I kicked him too soon. If I did, I'm sorry. But thank you, everyone, for um, joining me today. I'm not going to go through all the comments. I am just going to wrap this up, and this is going to be end. But if he pulls channel, takes off, and start paying rent, yeah, there we go. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. Hopefully, well, it's not hopefully. I will see you all next Sunday. I have an 
officially secured a guest yet, but I've got a few people in the pipeline. So the mystery is the same with me. So thank you all for tuning in. Before you all get bullying my girlfriend in the comments, <laughs> I'm going to dip. End broadcast.